What's up, Kyle Gang? So we got this statics problem today. So we're trying to find the moment of inertia around the x and y axis for this. So we have the shape here. It's like a cross shape. I uh, have the distances labeled here and uh, the, the ones for the problem labeled there. So let's go ahead and get started on this, right? So let's start with around the x axis. So the formula we're going to be using is i of x is equal to i bar of x plus area distance in the y squared. Let's not do y distance in the y squared. So x, y bar is something you can find in the back of the book, and it's defined for common shapes. So rectangles, circles, you can find that in the back of the book, and it'll give you a formula for this. Uh, and this is area, the distance in the y is the distance away from the centroid of the shape from the x-axis. So when we have this complex shape, we want to break it down into simple shapes. So the simplest shapes we can do is three rectangles on this. So let's label it. Let's draw some lines here. So this is going to be big rectangle one, this is going to be 2, and this is going to be 3. So we have 1, 2, 3 here. So we need to find it for each one of these shapes. So luckily for us, uh, 2 and 3 are symmetrical, right? So across the x-axis, they're going to have the same moment of inertia. And across the y-axis, they're also going to have the same moment of inertia. So we can just kind of make sure to do two of them for each one. So let's start with 1. All right, so starting with 1, i of x, 1 is equal to... So when you're doing this, uh, check out the equation. The equation for a 1 is going to be, if you're going around the x-axis, it's going to be 1 over 12 base height to the third. This is for rectangles. For any rectangle going around the moment of inertia of the x-axis, this is the formula. And then area, so it's going to be plus area, and the distance in the y. So what's distance in the y, right? It's distance away from the centroid. So we're rotating around the x-axis, but it's symmetrical across the x-axis. So it's distance in the y from its centroid, to the pipe. So we're circling around, it's going to be zero. So this is going to become zero squared, so this is all going to become zero. So let's plug in what we know. x1 is equal to 1 over 12. The base of this rectangle is 60. The height of this rectangle, right? 220 plus 60 plus 220. So what's that? 280. That's going to be 600, right? Right, that's 600 or 500. Let's see. Uh, that's going to be 500. 500 to the third, right? So there we go, so we found that out. Let me write it over here, my x1. If you plug this into your calculator, you get 600, 6.25, I mean, times 10 to the eighth millimeters to the fourth. Okay, let's do x2 and x3, or two and three, right? So two and three are gonna be equal to each other, so let's just do it for two. So again, the distance in the y, it's distance from the center of mass in the vertical direction from where we're rotating around, which is the x line. So it goes through the center, so it's gonna be zero. That's gonna become zero. So then we just have to do it again. So the equation is one over 12 base height cubed. So plugging in our numbers, so the base of one of these rectangles is 200. The height of one of these rectangles is 60. Plug it in. Wait, wait. Okay, I'm just right. So ix2 is equal to, and you get 3.60 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. And so that means that ix of 3 is equal to ix of 2. So now all we have to do is uh, plug it in, right? So we have to add them up because uh, we have three shapes and we need to add them up to find the total shape. So if we add all these up, right, i of x is equal to i x of 1 plus i x of 2 plus i x of 3. i x of 2 is equal to i x of 3. So you're going to i of x is equal to uh, 6.32 times 10 to the 8th millimeters to the 4th. All right, so we figured out part A. Let's do part B now. So now we're doing it around the x or the y axis. Right, so i y is equal to i bar of y plus area distance in the x squared this time. So distance in the x squared is distance this direction from the center of mass from the y axis. So let's go ahead and start. Let's do figure one. So i x of one is equal to so i bar for y. Uh, this time, it's similar for a rectangle, so 1 over 12. 
but instead of base height squared, it's height base squared, or by height base cubed. And that's our equation. So then distance in the x, right? So we're going around the y-axis and it's centered on the y-axis, so it's gonna have a zero distance. So this is gonna become zero. So plugging in numbers, one over 12, the height of it is 500, the base of it is 60, and make sure to cube the 60. So you plug that in, you get I of mine of one is equal to nine times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Cool. So let's do it for two now. So two is gonna use the same equation because it's also a rectangle. So it's gonna be one over 12. So we're doing two, one over 12, height, its height is 60. Its base is uh, how, length, how long it is, right? So it's 200. And then now we actually have area and distance in the y, right? So area, right, is base times height, and then distance in the y squared, or distance in the x squared. So base of this rectangle is 200, height of this rectangle is 60, and then what's distance in the y, right, or distance in the x? So the centroid of a rectangle, right, is going to be half of its length, so we know its centroid is at 100. Right, this is 100. Uh, to its centroid, which is right down the center of it. So we're coming from the y-axis, so half of this rectangle is 30, right? This is 30. So it's going to be 30 plus 100 to get to that. So of course that's 130. So 130, make sure to square it. So then you do this, you get i x of 2 is equal to 2.428 times 10 to the 8th. Right? So now if we look at I of 3, so this shape of 3 here, it's symmetrical to 2. It's just across the y-axis. So it's going to be the same moment of inertia. So moment of inertia x of 3 is equal to moment of inertia x of 2. So now all we have to do, if we want to find that, I of y is equal to I of y of 1 plus I of y of 2 plus I. Are you doing x or y? I did not mean to put x's here. Oops. I, y of 3. Right, so we're just going to add this, this, and then this again. And you're going to find that I of y, moment of inertia on the y axis, is equal to 4.946 times 10 to the 8th millimeters uh, cubed to the 4th. There you go. That's your final answer. So yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Uh, it's kind of tricky, but it's just a lot of work, really. Uh, so if you have any questions on questions like this, uh, feel free to check out my channel. I have a whole lot of topics like this. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.